Hello everyone. Now we are going to discuss the different types of behavior. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to learn the different types of behaviors, identify the uh, uh, how the environment affects our behaviors, and identify the advantages and disadvantages of some behaviors. As you all know, organisms have the ability to interact between each other in a specific way. This interaction, like competition for resources, can influence animals' behaviors. The result of a competition, as we have taken before, uh, result in a winner and a loser, and the winner will have access to reproduction and all resources needed for survival. This is called a competitive behavior. So as a definition, a competitive behavior is when two organisms of same species, two individuals of same species, interact between each other by competition, and the result of this competition will be a winner and a loser. The winner will have access or control over the uh, resources available and the loser will give up and will move away from a place. This image here shows how bighorn sheep fight over a mate. At first, the animals compete for mating. Their thick horns available here will protect their heads, but the fight will not last for a long time because one of the animals will give up, giving access to the other for all resources available. When the winner reproduces, it will transmit all its genes to future generations to offspring. We can identify actually three main types of, uh, uh, of competitive behavior. We have the agonistic behavior, the dominance hierarchies, and the territorial. Starting by the first type of competitive behavior, it is the agonistic behavior. Agonistic behavior is the same example that we have taken about bighorn sheep. This image here shows the steps of an agonistic behavior in which polar bears start fighting, but the result at the end will be one will give up, which is the loser, and one will be the winner. Note that the loser will not have severe injuries. There is no any kind of death available here. There is a competition, but at the end it will diminish. The second image here shows the similar example but now between sheep so this kind of behavior will will appear in mostly all individuals of same species but we obtain at the end a winner and the loser the deer that fight by competition at the end one of them will move away and will be the loser it will give control for the the other animal and the winner will have access to reproduce and to benefit from all resources as food and meat and water available in this place. This is concerning the agonistic behavior. This is the definition of agonistic behavior. The second example is the dominance hierarchies. Some individuals found in nature are grouped and they are also divided or ranked from highest to lowest importance. For example, in beehives, Bees are divided into the queen. In this example, you can see here the different types of bees. We have the queen, which is the reproducing female. It is ranked at the highest importance. We have the worker, the workers that help to control the hives. And we have the drones that help gathering nectar. Because those insects are ranked, the queen will have access to all resources without any competition with others. This will ensure that the queen can get food easily. This behavior actually reduces the hostile behaviors in animals. We have another example, which is in wolves. Wolves actually, as males or females, they are ranked as at the top, uh, the top rank animal will be the alpha wolves. The lowest ranked animals will be the omega wolves. The alpha wolves, because they are ranked the highest animals, they are responsible for making decisions. They are the strongest in all the group of animals and they can manage everything available in a place. They can manage or control the resources available. While by moving downward through this ranking system, the uh, functions of these animals will start diminishing. For example, the omega animals here, they are responsible of watching the boundaries. They are responsible of, uh, of protecting the territory of organisms or the place and to move away any danger that could be available. This is concerning the dominance hierarchies. The third type of competitive behavior is the territorial behavior. 
First of all, we need to identify what is a territory. A territory is an area that belongs to an individual and it contains all needed resources. So individuals tend to defend and protect their territories against other animals. For example, if food is available in a specific area or specific place and, it, and this food belongs to uh, specific species of animals, uh, actually the, those animals will tend to protect this area in order to benefit from, uh, from these foods. There are many signs of territorial behavior. So animals can protect their territories by many types. For example, we have the verbal signals. Verbal signals, for example, in birds and wolves. Birds will start singing, wolves will, uh, will start howling in order to maintain or to mark their territories. Other animals, when they hear these sounds, will not have the opportunity to cross the lines or to cross the territory and to take resources from it. Another type of uh, of signals which is a chemical signal it can be done by cats and cheetahs for example they mark their territories by chemicals like urine they urinate they urinate around the territory or around the place uh, their own place so animals other animals of other species cannot cross it bears for example they can mark specific physical signals by marking trees they put uh, marks on trees just to uh, to let other animals know that this place belongs to birds. Gannets here, for for example, in this picture, they also mark their uh, their territory by fighting. They keep fighting in a colony in order to maintain a space in it. This is concerning the territorial behavior. Another type of behavior other than the competitive behavior, it is the foraging behavior. So we have done by the competitive behavior in which we have a kind of competition for protection or obtaining resources. We have another type which is the foraging behavior. Foraging behavior, it is the obtain of food and all resources in the easiest way without consuming energy or by consuming a low amount of energy. So animals, by doing a foraging behavior, they tend to obtain the maximum amount of food in the shortest time by consuming the lowest amount of energy. Plus, they have to maintain safe and they have to keep safe from predators. For example, the animal who is able to maintain a foraging behavior will succeed to reproduce and to transmit the genes for, uh, uh, for future generations. Let's take the example of the giraffe eating from the canopy of trees. Actually, the giraffe here by eating, it is not consuming energy because already its, uh, its long neck will allow it to eat easily without stretching it. It can eat from canopy of trees in a place in which we don't have a predator. So the giraffe here actually is maintaining a kind of a uh, 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 of a foraging behavior. Another kind of behaviors other than the foraging behavior, we have the migratory behavior. Migration, as you know, it is the movement of individuals from a place to another seeking for food, water, or for mating. This movement is called migration. The migratory behavior, actually, it is done by many organisms. Example of migration of birds from cold to warm places or migration of herds of zebras here from arid places to uh, to places where food and water is available but actually how do animals know how to move how does the migratory behavior can be done in animals many animals for example the snow geese available here the snow geese they can know how to migrate from north to south or vice versa by using the position of stars. When they use it for the first time or for many repeated times, they know later how to migrate easily. They can have their own navigation system or they may use the, uh, the magnetic field of the earth. For example, here in this image, it shows how do the snow geese can migrate from north to south and from south to north. We have another example which is about two-thirds of birds in uh, America. Actually they travel from North America when it is cold to South America because it will be warm so they can benefit from the temperature available there. And actually the 
uh, the opposite process will occur. When it is winter in the south, they have to travel to the North America. This is concerning the migratory behavior. Concerning now the biological rhythms, what are bio biological rhythms? As we can know, biological, it is related to biology, it is related to the internal functioning of organisms, and rhythm, it is a repeated behavior. Biological rhythm, it is a repeated behavior with a rhythmic cycle. For example, the circadian rhythm. What is circadian rhythm? It is a repeated rhythm in organisms. It can occur, for example, daily, seasonal, or yearly. These rhythms actually are affected by environmental factors. For example, the temperature available. When we have a change in temperature, organisms will change their behaviors in specific cycles. Uh, the amount of, uh, of light, the daylight, the number of hours of darkness, for example, the availability of food. Let's take the example of nocturnal organisms that, uh, that are awake at night in order to seek food and they are sleepy during the day. For example, animals in the desert, for example, uh, reptiles in a desert, actually they are active at night because there is a lower temperature at night and they are actually inactive during the day because of the high temperature. The humans also actually, they have a kind of a circadian rhythm, which is the sleep and wake cycle which uh, that can occur over that can occur over 24 hours actually animals have a kind of an internal clock which is called the biological clock our biological clock is when we sleep during uh, when we sleep at night and we wake up uh, during the day we become active during the day we're going to discuss the different ways animals could communicate why as you all know there are many ways of communication between animals you already have an idea about the physical ways like barking of dogs like howling of wolves or singing birds but there are also chemical ways by which animals can communicate to attract the mate we can have two main types of communication the pheromones which are chemicals sent produced and sent by uh, individuals of uh, of same species and we have the auditory behavior which is a physical way used by animals in order to communicate starting by the first type which is pheromones pheromones actually they are kinds of chemicals produced and spread by individuals these chemicals cannot be detected by other species so we can call them species specific pheromones send, send important signals to other individuals like protection or predation here in these images we can identify different types of uh, different uh, different types and different ways of use of pheromones for example the first image here shows how cheetahs for example leave a chemical to give information about its availability in an area ants for example as you know have you ever wondered why ants follow the same path when they are moving this actually done this is actually done because of uh, of pheromones produced by ants when they start releasing scents these scents will be detected by other ants so they start following it and then they 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 will be able to move in the same path we have other types of uh, pheromones used for mating actually pheromones are also produced by females these pheromones can be detected by males so they can approach for mating this is concerning the pheromones concerning the other type of communication which is the physical uh, physical type it is the communication uh, that can be done by auditory communication audit auditory ways which is a language used by species to communicate this way can actually be more efficient than pheromones or the chemical uh, signals because sounds can spread faster and this will be an advantage of uh, of auditory communication sounds can be sent by animals for many reasons birds for example they sing to attract mates dogs bark to send information to other dogs over long distances to mark their existence or to tell them that there is a predator available in a place. Wolves, for example, howl for the same reason.
Uh, humans also are able to make auditory behaviors by using a complex language we speak, which is a complex language, and it is shared uh, by other uh, humans to, uh, to share complex information. Now we are going to understand the behaviors that could be directly related to reproduction and taking care of offspring. The behavior related to reproduction is called courting behavior and it is done by different ways called courtship rituals. And the behavior related to caring of offspring is called the nurturing behavior. First of all, let's start by the courting behavior. What is a courting behavior and what are the ways of courting rituals? Males and females can perform species-specific signals called courtship rituals. An example, when a male frigate bird, this is the male frigate bird, it inflates a, uh, a sac that is available below its beak. It is the red throat of the uh, frigate bird to attract females during breeding seasons. The rituals can also be done by different forms, for example, by the colored feathers of birds or organisms. The colored feathers of peacock, for example. We have the sounds or the dancing ways of birds, the different colors of insects, for example. These are all called the courtship rituals. Actually, usually, which individual can uh, choose the mate? The females are usually the ones that could be able to choose the male. When they want to choose the mate, they choose the strongest and the largest one. That's why males compete with each other in order to be the first chosen by the female. Concerning the nurturing behavior, nurturing behavior, it is, it is when after giving birth, the parents will take care and raise their offspring. This way is called the nurturing behavior. That means to provide, to provide food, protection, and to teach the offspring specific survival skills. Animals, in order to nurture their offspring, they require energy. The difference in the nurturing process is by the period of nurturing related to the amount of energy. For example, the gorilla, they... for. The gorilla, for example, they nurture their offspring between three to five years until they can manage all their survival conditions. That's why they give birth of only one offspring. During the nurturing period, gorillas consume lots of energy. That's why they give only one organism or one offspring. Codfish, for example, it is the same for penguins, same example. Codfish, for example, they use lots of energy to lay millions of eggs, but they do not have enough energy to nurture them. That's why they leave them in water until eggs they hatch. When they hatch, the, uh, the organism or the uh, newly hatched uh, codfish, they move alone and they learn different survival skills without the nurturing process of organism. Actually, this behavior will teach not only organisms about, uh, uh, that means the parents will not nurture organisms or uh, to, to raise them, but also it gives information about reproduction patterns that can be used by new offspring. We have another type of behaviors. It is called the cooperative behavior. Cooperative behavior, as the name shows, it is a kind of cooperation that an animal can do in order to, uh, to help other individuals of same species without having, for example, any, uh, the animal, the individual can make a kind of a self-sacrifice without getting any positive or negative feedback from the other individuals. This a kind of behavior is called the altruistic behavior. What is altruistic behavior? Altruistic behavior is where some animals perform an action that benefits another organism at cost of itself. Let's take the most known example. It is the mole rats that live in colonies underground. Mole rats actually as you can see here in this figure, you can identify that there are many mole rats that are surrounding the female. We are going to learn now what is the reason of surrounding it. The mole rats live in colonies and this colony is comprised of the queen, which is the only one that is able, the only female that is able to reproduce. We have the kings 
that are the mature males and they have the ability to make reproduction or to mate with the queen and we have between 75 and 250 males and females that do not reproduce these are the non-reproductive individuals in the colony the kings actually they can mate with the queen to produce offspring the non-reproductive individuals protect the, que the queen the kings and the offspring by huddling around the queen they can maintain a warm body temperature you can see here in the second picture how bees actually they can cooperate to make a kind of bridge by which other they are sacrificing they are making a self-sacrifice in order to make the path for birds to move now we are going to talk a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of certain behaviors let's take the example of migration what do you think will be the advantages migration will increase the chances of survival by movement over long distances for example we took the example of birds that move from uh, north america to south america in order to uh, uh, to seek for warm temperatures the disadvantage of this movement is the energy that could be consumed for example the energy needed to move over long distances will decrease the uh, the ability to survive what are the advantages of pheromone communication pheromones as we have said they provide species specific form of communication that can reduce the predator's ability to detect them as we have said predators cannot detect these pheromones but the disadvantage is that pheromones have limited uh, range of communication it is not the same as auditory or visual cues or ways the auditory communication can be sp uh, can can spread faster concerning the nurturing behavior what are the advantages of nurturing behavior nurturing increases the offspring chance of survival genes of the parent will continue to be transmitted over future generations so it will be available and the future generations when they give birth they can also nurture their offspring the disadvantage is that parents will spend increased amount of energy on caring for offspring and this will uh, will possibly cost the parents health or safety this is concerning our uh, lesson about the ecological behaviors in this lesson we have discussed many points what are the ecological behaviors how could the environment affect our behaviors and the different types of behaviors done by individuals in order in order to maintain the survival condition